a devil that's trying to destroy you. And it's not just about you. It's about your destiny. It's about where you're going. It's about your family. It's who you are. I'm up here preaching today the way I preach today because I watched my daddy preach this way. And I believe in holiness. And I believe in a day of righteousness. And I believe that we need to be holy. Oh, what be he said, touch not. I love Judah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're excited what God is going to be doing here today at Paxton. Stay tuned because something great is about to come your way. Go ahead and start getting dressed so you can be in this great service today. I'll be back right after this. You don't want to miss that Wednesday night service. It's an awesome time in the Lord where I get to preach. I get to pray for folks. Oh, you know, folks that I, I have more time to give personal ministry. Make your plans to be with us every Wednesday night right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. Great things are happening Wednesday night, 7.30. We'll see you in the house. You don't want to miss Friday morning. Every Friday morning, great things are happening. I will be praying for the sick. If you need a miracle from God, you want to be here every Friday morning at 10.30. It is called a miracle service because miracles take place. Make your plans to be with us Friday morning, 10.30. Bring someone that needs a word from God. Oh, I'm excited what God's going to be doing great here today at the Paxton Revival Center Church. Three great services, early worship at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and 6 p.m. revival service tonight. We're excited what God is doing. Do you need a touch in your life? You want to be here. You still have time to help us on the mission trip. I'm going to tell you about the mission trip and what God is going to be doing. How to, as we go into Haiti, our men go into Haiti, taking 20 tons of beans and rice, uh, tons of clothes, uh, all kind of good stuff we're taking, and you can help and be a part of it. I'll, I'll be back right after this. Here we are, and as you see, people are chasing us for miles and miles to get beans and rice. Last year, we take 12 tons of beans and rice. This year, our goal is 20 tons of beans and rice. All, all we needed you to do is just help us to buy some beans and rice. We promise you every dollar that comes in will go to buy beans and rice. We don't take nothing out for us, nothing out for travel. Every dollar goes for you know, for beans and rice. I walked in, which in this little village, and uh, we got off of the truck, and after the people was grabbing and shaking, and we walked in this little village, and I had heard for a long time that people in Haiti eat dirt. I just kind of throwed it to the side. I walked into the villages, which, and this is what I saw. Here, I, here I'm standing in, in a small little village, and and all this stuff down on the ground is actually actually a top of a dirt they eat. They actually eat this, which they actually, you know, they make it up in this area, they actually eat, you know, this does, and the missionary began to tell us that is nothing but dirt. It's nothing but dirt. And you see those little round dirt patties, they add salt to it to add some flavor to it. It fills their stomach up. It gives them no nutrition. But I'm going to go and take beans and rice in the name of Jesus. I'm just excited that we get to go and bless somebody. Before the earthquake, our missionary says that, uh, that you know, there was not tons and tons of Christians. But after the earthquake, because of the love of, 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 of the American church and Christians, went down there and loved on them so much that it's almost 70% now Christians in Haiti. How do we need to get it up to 100%? And by us giving to them, it shows the love of Jesus. And there's three different ways that you can give. You can call the church office. Uh, and, you know, that is, uh, that's Monday through Friday. And give it on a credit card. Or you can go online to PaxonRevivalCenter.com and hit the donut button and say, I want to give to missions. Or you can just sit down and write a check and send it to the church office. And uh, all the money will go. We just want to ask you that. You know, I don't do this a whole lot. But I will do it to help people that are hungry. I will do it to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to ask you to stand with us and God will bless you. Oh, I hope that you pray about helping 
which our mission program, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. You don't want to miss the service today. It's going to be an awesome time of the Lord. Remember, you can go to our, or which you can go to our webpage, PaxRevivalCenter.com. Find all the information about the church into the preaching of God's First word. Peter chapter five, verse number one: The elders which among you I exhort, who am an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and are also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock which is among you, taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, but by willingness, not with filthy liquor, but for uh, uh, but a ready mind. Neither as being the Lord's over God's inheritance, but as the examples of the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Like the wise younger, submit yourself to the elder. And he says, subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud, and he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, humble yourself under the hand of the Almighty God, that he may exalt you in due season. I wish I had time to preach that. You preach it, that this is our due season when you humble yourself. Cast all your cares upon him. He cares for you. Be sober. The devil, the, uh, the adversary, you have an adversary, the devil, as he's roaring about seeking whom he may, be, uh, he, he may devour, you may be seated. One translation, put it like this, keep a cool head and stay alert. The devil is supposed to pounce, and would I have nothing better to catch you napping? Keep your guard up. You're not the only one plunged into these hard times. Yes, that's true. It's the same with Christians all around the world. So keep a firm grip of your faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long until this generous God who has great plans for you in Christ. When we begin to understand, he said, we have a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And I, my mind began to go on uh, the roaring line. He roars does not mean that he's, he, it's the noise, it's the fear, it's the, the, the thing that I'm afraid of, the thing that I hear. Uh, yeah, so where is, the, uh, where is it that the line roars? And this is where if I, if I was going to title my sermon, it's, uh, it's where is the line roars and where does the line feed? First of all, he roars and he feeds where the fire goes out. A lion does not like fire. I'm telling you right now, there's about 12 or 15 things I'm going to throw at you in a hurry. The, the, a lion does not like fire because it exposes where he is. The second thing, he, he feeds where the stragglers roam. You know where that is. If you get out of the will of God and you get over here by yourself, the lion's just waiting to bounce up on your head and to feed upon you. He's left where the door is unopened. Uh, he's where the door is left open. You leave the door open. I read in the story said that this man was out in the jungle and he got out of the car and he opened up the door, got back in and he left the door open, which tells me if you've ever dealt with alcohol, drugs, or addiction, you better be careful about leaving that door open because that demon will jump right back in the front seat. That line will bounce right back in there. You don't go around where all those folks are. Uh, and the fourth thing is where men walk in darkness, I, I, which I read a story where that uh, you know, which a little boy he walked out in the darkness, and and which and he began to be eaten by a lion. He said, "Blessed in the Psalms one and one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor setteth in the seat of the scornful." It is so important for us to walk in the light, as he said in the book of Ephesians five and eight. For you were sometimes darkened, darkened, but you are now walking in the light of God. So walk as the children of light. And he says, don't have fellowship with it. And, which, and the next one is where there is no vision uh, the, you know, you know, that you perish. So therefore, if you have a light and the light goes out, then you begin to perish if you don't know where you're going. Lot begin to look around and Lot begin to say, uh, Lot's wife says, look at this out here. I want this. And she began to look out in the world and begin to want some things in the world, but it brought, uh, which it brought, the, it brought depth unto her. It may be a pleasure for a little bit, but it's not going to be on, on long until your life is over with. He said, take heed in Luke chapter 11, verse 35, that, you, uh, the, the, that the light which we, that is in you be not darkened. So we got to be careful that the light is on the inside of us. And the fifth thing is where the buffalo are arguing. You know, buffalo in uh, which, which in Africa, when the buffalo begins to see the lion comes, they begin to make a circle. And when he makes a circle, you know, you know they begin to put the backsides uh, and you know, they make a circle and they put the horns out. Because where the horns is, 
uh, the, the line can't come in. It can't get in there. But only when there begin to be an argument between one and another. I really wish I had time to preach this, Mom. You, when there begin to be an argument one between another and begins to be a division, then the line begins to get in and get behind them. How can walk? Uh, Amos said, how can two walk together except they agree? It is so important for us not to let the devil take advantage of us by getting into our life. It's so easy for us to let something get in our spirit and bother us. But we got to, we are the children of the Most High God. If we're going to be used by God, you are going to be attacked. The devil is going to come up against you, but you are the child of God. You've got to stand together. The big old lion will come in. And the lions do not like to eat where there's a little dog because the little dog will always bark and the little dog, uh, the dog will always let uh, the sound of the animal, uh, you, know, and, you know, the sound, uh, uh, and the dog can sense something. Real children of God can sense what's happening. Uh, you know, dogs can tell something that is coming down the road. It is very important for us to be able to be sensitive to what the Spirit of God has in our life. And number seven is where there's an oversight, uh, is absence, uh, it, 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 which it tells me, uh, which in the story that I read, that this cattleman had his cows out there in the field, and he didn't have his light on, and, and, which, and he left the cattle out there all night long, and, and, and he get up the next morning, and this cattle was gone because he oversighted it. He did not think it was going to happen. We have to be careful with sin and addictions and problems in our life because we say it can't happen to me. I cannot fall that way. I cannot, it, it won't happen to me. The devil come to steal, the kill, and destroy, but Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have life more abundant. And number eight is where the word is disobeyed. You know, this young boy, you know, he said, Dad, I'm going to go deer hunting. And Dad says, don't go too far away from the Jeep. Don't get between me and, uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and all of a sudden, the dad seen out in the woods, he seen the lion, he told the son, be careful, don't go out that way. But the son was disobedient and begin to go out that way. We have to be careful when we get out of the will of God, the line is waiting on you. When you get away from living like you're supposed to be living and doing what you're supposed to be doing, well, Pastor, what am I supposed to be doing? I don't have to sit here and read the 99 do's and don'ts. You, the Spirit of God will already tell you. If something's striving on the inside of you, well, you shouldn't say that, you shouldn't do that, you probably shouldn't say that. And you probably shouldn't do that. The devil wants to come and mess with you. And, and, and number nine is the lion likes to feed where the waters drink. Where the water drinks and you, where the animals go down to the water. Can I tell you, there are some lions in the church that's roaring around in the church uh, that wants to hand, uh, hurt folks and hinder folks. And, uh, and they want to talk about folks. And uh, you know, they want to feed on the sheep that is weak in the church. Uh, how did the Bible says in, in the book of Jude chapter one and four, for they are are some men that crept in underwear who were of the or old ordinance to the uh, condemnation ungodly man turning the grace of God into delicious visions and denying the only one the, the Lord God and Jesus Christ you have to be careful but with who you get connected with even in the church because even in the church, if they're not giving glory to God, you need to live them alone. If they just want to talk about everybody else's hairdo and what everybody else is doing, you need to leave them alone. You, how they, because the line walking around doing you. If they're bringing gossip to you, hello, they're going to take gossip from you somewhere else. And in the middle of the gossip, they're going to drop your name as if you're the one that said it. And it was they that, oh, I need to hush up. That's a sermon all by itself. If they don't bring you any good news, don't even talk to them. How Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is that my microwave going off? I need to go, girl. Is that my dryer finished? I need to go, girl. I need to check and see if there's someone at the door. You know there ain't nobody, but you're just checking, making sure nobody ain't at the door. The Bible said, give no place to the devil. And I don't have time to preach it, but you know what I'm talking about. The devil wants to come in and destroy you. And number 10, where the authority is rebelled. You know, you know, the lady uh, was walking outside of the camp and, and, and what the owner of the camp says, ma'am, you can't go out here, but I'm, uh, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. The devil will tell you, you okay. You strong enough. You can go out to the club. Oh, I need to hush you up. Uh, you can go down to the wall. Uh, you know, you're down to the corner. Uh, you can go over to that old boyfriend and girlfriend's house. Let me shut up. You can call them and you can do something wrong. Oh, you're strong enough. Uh, but God said, come out from among them 
them and be clean and be holy. You ain't strong enough to leave it by yourself. That's why you got to leave it on the corner. You got to leave it where it's at because where there is no authority in that the story said that the woman was eating because of it. the Bible said in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and 17 obey them that have rule over you uh, and submit yourself now I don't, I don't need to use that word submission it's a, it's a cuss word in the church for they watch for your souls as they must give account that they must do it with joy and not with grief for that it is unprofitable to you uh, number 11 is where there is no defense where there's no f- defense a, a story was that uh, which a man that uh, was a farmer he had three uh, he had three shotguns uh, shells and he went out and he seen there was uh, you know there was a uh, there's a big male line and and there was two female lines and there was growling coming up on him he was able to take two of them out and had one left he began to climb up the tree and when he got up the tree Something happened to his gun. How he was not supposed to be there. He thought that he could handle it by himself. You cannot handle sin by yourself. You cannot handle things of this world by yourself. You got to have the blood of Jesus upon your body, upon your mind. If the devil will come to mess with you, the Bible says it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It is so important for us to have the word of God. This is what our defense is. Our defense is not having a good friend. Our defense is not knowing everything and everybody, but our defense is when we know the word of God, when Jesus said in the book of Matthew 4 and in the book of Luke chapter 4, he began to say, devil, get behind me. It is written. You begin to speak the word of God as I preached this morning in early worship. Angels will get on assignment and angels will go for your rescue and angels will work for you. I come by today to preach to somebody. The devil wants to mess with you, but there's some folks in this church. There's some folks in this church that you ain't letting the lion growl at you and get you scared. You're not letting fear. That's why you're here this morning. I don't care what happened last Sunday. I don't care what happened next Sunday. I don't care what happens in China. I don't care what happens in Africa. I don't care what happens in South Korea, North Korea. I'm still going to believe God and I'm going to stand strong knowing that there's no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper and the twelfth one is where the roar succeeds. A lion will roar at a zebra. A zebra can outrun the lion. The zebra has to make it up in his mind that I've got to get away from this. If not, it's going to kill me. The lion's got one shot at the zebra. And the devil only got one shot at you. Paul said this in the, in the book of Ephesians 6 and 4. Stand forth having your loins girded about with the truth having your blessed plate of righteousness. He can roar all that he wants to roar, but I'm going to be like the zebra. I'm going to outrun him. I'm not going to lay around and to think that I can do it. Uh, I know I'm running through these in a hurry. And, and 13, where there is a dead carcass, it tells us if you study on a line, the line will kill a little animal and put it out in the middle of the field waiting for the other animals to come to eat it. You begin to hang around dead stuff, dead works. You begin to hang around it. The devil going to bring you down. You cannot do it when you hang around death stuff. He be, because he loves to catch somebody eating on dead stuff. What is dead stuff? Dead stuff is old rumors and old ways of life. And uh, Jeremiah 2 and 13 said, My people had committed two evils. They had forsaken me the, the fountains of the living water and had hewn down their sickers and broken their sickers and cannot hold any water. The young lions roar upon him and yell, and they made his land waste. The lion wants to yell at you, but I come to tell the devil there is some people in this building. I'm getting to you right now. The devil has been roaring, and you've been hearing his roar. The devil's got up on his back feet and clawed and made some weird sounds, but you're still standing in the house of God. The devil messed with your health, messed with your finances, but you're still in the house of God. The Bible says that we need to stand like we never stand. And the number 14 is where the men are deceived. We have to be careful. Paul said in the book of 2 Corinthians 11, 14, not to marvel for Satan himself will transfer himself as an angel of light. You got 
got to be careful. The devil come to deceive you. That's okay. It's okay. We live in a different world today. You know, everything is different. Don't y'all hear that? I get tired of hearing that. You know, that's just acceptable today. Sin has never been acceptable in the eyes of God. Sin is sin, and sin will keep you out of the presence of God. Well, pastor, I, I believe that grace doctrine. I do too, and that's why I'm saved, because if it had not been for the grace of Jesus Christ, I would be in hell, and when I messed up, he forgave me over and over again, but we got to be careful. Don't get this rub the grace in over and over again. Well, pastor, I can do anywhere that I want to. That's what happened in the book of Genesis chapter 3 uh, that Adam and Eve come out and, and the serpent begin to be more subtle and begin to talk to Eve and say, it's all right. And I love what it says. It says, he began, and she began eating and said, you wanted to eat of the field in verse number 2 of the chapter 3. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the garden, but the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat of it, but he come by and he said in three and four you can eat of this and you can't die oh now we look back and say she should not listen to the serpent because the serpent deceived her we do the same thing when the devil tell oh, I know I don't need to preach this this morning after the move of God and everybody was shouting everybody was praising God we was having a good time in the house but now I begin to talk about being deceived oh I can never be deceived you better be careful lest you think you, well, you, know, you know, that you are somebody and you die so therefore she said that the devil said to her, serpent said, you can eat it and you ain't going to die. Let me go on to number 15. Where the foolish stand. Proverbs 14 and 9 says, fools make a mockery at sin. Fools make a mockery at sin. But among the righteous, there is favor. Fools begin to laugh at sin. A young boy had a cage. They had a lion in a cage. The young boy had him a stick slapping the side of the bamboo cage. The cage was locked up. And the daddy says, boy, you leave the lion alone, you're going to make him mad. No, I'm, I'm good. And slap it until that lion got mad and tore of that bamboo stage apart. He began to break out of it. Why? He began to play the part of a fool. He began to mess with it. You can't mess with some stuff. I'm talking to somebody here this morning. I don't know why I'm preaching like this, but I'm talking to somebody. You have a lion that's roaring in your life. You have a devil that's trying to destroy you. And it's not just about you. It's about your destiny. It's about where you're going. It's about your family. It's who you are. I'm up here preaching today the way I preach today because I watched my daddy preach this way. And I believe in holiness. And I believe in a day of righteousness. And I believe that we need to be holy Oh will be he said touch not taste not and come out from all I need of God I need somebody this morning to understand that we are going to play that place of a fool when the fool has said in his heart there is no God the fool said there is no God the fool says in number 16 where man builds a fence I'm coming back to this next week but let me hit hit here a line loves it when you get a fence and you get inside, you can't get out. The lion loves it when you begin to build a defense. The Bible says there is people in the word of God like David. David went up to the lion in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and he slew the lion. Samson got some lions and he began to tear the lion apart. There are some folks that will able to destroy the lion. Uh, and then we can come and say, Daniel didn't kill the lion, he tamed the lion. Daniel went and laid to sleep in the thing that wanted to destroy him. Why? He was in relationship with his father, with his heavenly father. He understand his heavenly father could tame the lion. We have to be careful where we are living in the day that we're living in. The devil will come out to mess with you. I, I am closing this morning in Job 4 and 10. And the roaring of the lion and the voice of the lion and the teeth of the young lions are broken. I really believe as a child of God, if you will study the word, if you will study the word and do what we need to be doing in this day and hour that we're living in, and that's pray. If you will study the word and stay on your knees and pray, you will break the teeth of the lion. He has a roar, but he don't have any bite. 
He has a roar, but he can't destroy you. He said, the old lion shall perish for the lack of prey. Why? God said, I'm going to deliver you out, and the old lion can't find you. I'm going to put you to the place, and I'm going to seal you with it. And the young lion is going to be scattered apart. We give no place to the devil this morning, church. If there's a been a time that we need to trust God, we need to trust him. Ever been a time that we need to get connected to God, the world needs you more than we've ever, we've ever needed before. In closing, the Amplified Bible said this in 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast a, 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 a whole of your cares, all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all your concerns, once for all unto him. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Be balanced, be vigilant, always cautious in time because we have a devil. Control yourself and be careful. The devil, your enemy, walking around like a roaring lion looking to somebody to eat. Refuse to give in by standing strong in your faith. You know that your Christian family all over the world are suffering just like you're suffering. We are living in a day and hour where people think that you're going through something that nobody else is going through. Don't you look at somebody else's trial and compare it to your trial because your, your trial could be bigger than that tomorrow. We need the Bible said, pray ye one for another. When you see your brother or sister in, in trouble, pray for them. Because if you say, I remember this coming up, I, I, I remember this coming up a long time ago as I would see people say, they would talk about other people's children. I remember my daddy say, they don't need to talk about their children. Their children ain't raised yet. They don't need to talk about their grandchildren. Their grandchildren ain't raised just yet. Oh, you, they're out, they're out there breaking in cars. You need to you be careful what you say about them. Pray for them because yours could be the same way. How This is where the devil comes in in our mind and our heart and begins to tell us that we're going to lose. But I come to tell the devil, I got a God on my side. I can hear the devil roar, but I'm going to be like that. Oh, we're excited what God is doing here today. Today is going to be an awesome time and three great services. That is 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and 6 p.m. I'll be preaching to all three services. Today's going to be awesome time. Remember, there's phone numbers on the screen. If you need prayer, call those numbers. Somebody wanting to pray for you. Until we see you in these great Holy Ghost services here today, remember, God's got to change. There's a shift coming in your life. Get dressed and get here. God's got something for you. We'll see you here.